Now, Nancy Pelosi has for a very long time not come out and said this, and I kind of suspected that she would, but now it finally happened, I guess, because now she's Speaker of the House and she barely beat out in my mind. I mean, I, I know from a number of standpoints, she won convincingly. I'm just talking about there are aspects within the Democrat Party now that are openly socialist and much further to the left than the traditional Democrat that Nancy Pelosi tends to be, even though she's moved quite a bit to the left as well in the past few years. But this is Nancy Pelosi sort of embracing a line that has been used by the more radical aspects of her base for a while now. The fact is, a wall is an immorality. It's not who we are as a nation. And this is not a wall between Mexico and the United States that the president is creating here. It's a wall between reality and his constituents, his supporters. He does not want them to know what he's doing to Medicare and Medicaid and Social Security in his budget proposal. He does not want them to know what he's doing to clean air and clean water and the rest in his Department of Interior and of, uh, of EPA. He does not want them to know how he is hurting them. So he keeps the subject on the wall. He's a master of diversion. We're trying to open up government. We're giving him a mature path to do so. And so Nancy Pelosi, they're asserting that the wall itself is immoral. And first of all, I would like to point out the Democrats have this strange habit of attributing moral attributes to inanimate objects. Walls cannot be immoral. And they do the same thing with guns. Guns cannot be immoral. Guns cannot be moral. They cannot be good. They cannot be bad. They are inanimate objects. They have no moral qualities. Now, how a person uses them can be immoral or moral, but the object itself is not bad. If you think that the way that Trump is going to use it is immoral, okay, make that case. But just saying, oh, well, it's immoral. You're not giving anything to back that up. And again, I guess I expect too much because I'm somebody that has a basis in rational thought, logical thinking, debate. But when I'm looking at this and staring down this argument, there's nothing to it. She doesn't, she just makes a claim and moves on. It's not even technically an argument because she doesn't have anything to back it up. And for an argument to exist, you need evidence to back a claim. And so she's just saying, well, it's immoral. And then moving on. Well, why is it immoral? Can you make the case of why it would be immoral? Nobody ever does that. Whether it's Nancy Pelosi or the activist on the left, nobody actually tries to explain this is why the wall is immoral. This is why the wall would be bad for us, bad for them, whatever. But you have to make the case of why it would be immoral. And so far, nobody has even really attempted to do that. And her base has been saying this for weeks. In fact, if you're looking at the uh, some of the, the people in her base, I, I know that I've seen all these protesters that have said things like, uh, if your generation builds the wall, then we will tear it down. Well, again, why? You're not making the case for why the wall is immoral. And another thing, too, are you, are you going to tear down the walls that are already there? And this is really, if you're taking this to its logical conclusion, this is the problem with Nancy Pelosi's argument as well. Because if she's saying the wall itself is immoral, the border wall itself is immoral, then let's apply that logic to other situations and see if it pans out. This is a, a good thought exercise for those of you that are learning logical thinking, rational thinking, to be able to apply a concept to a different situation and see if it still bears out. So. Were the walls immoral when Democrats voted for 700 miles of them in 2006? Because that's exactly what happened. You had Democrats all over the place passing this by an overwhelming majority in 2006. There were about 700 walls in the Secure Fence Act of 2006, and the Democrats voted in favor of it. Now, granted, Nancy Pelosi didn't, but an awful lot of the members of the House did. In fact, if you're looking at it, and if you're looking in the Senate, for example, you had Chuck Schumer, Hillary Clinton, Dianne Feinstein, Barbara Boxer, Bill Nelson, President Obama himself. 26 Democrat senators said, yeah, border wall, good idea. 
It included other things too, but they saw the proposal, saw that it had 700 miles worth of border wall, and they're like, yep, we're going to go with it. Was it immoral then? Because if that's the case, Nancy, you need to call out Chuck Schumer, you need to call out Barack Obama, you need to call out all the other Democrat senators that voted for the wall and tell them that they were immoral too. Because if you're taking your argument to this logical conclusion, then you have to say it was immoral then, it's immoral now. And you have to say the same thing to the members of the House that are still part of the Democrat Party. There were, I believe, 20 or sorry, 64 Democrats in the House that actually voted in favor of the Secure Fence Act in 2006. And so if it's immoral now, why was it not immoral then? Are you saying that all the Democrats that voted in favor of it did so in error and that they were immoral for doing so? Not a policy difference, because that's. You can have a policy difference and it not have a moral component to it. But you're saying it was actually immoral. And if that's the case, you need to go out and rebuke your fellow Democrats that voted for it in 2006. Here's the other question. Are border walls immoral? Because if the border wall itself is immoral, if it would be immoral for America to do it, wouldn't it be immoral for other countries to do it? You would think so. It would make no sense for it to only be immoral when America does it, even though that seems to be the standard by the left, because if that's the case, there's a lot of immoral countries out there. For example, at the end of World War II, seven nations had border walls. Seven. As of 1989, keep in mind, this is the year that I was born, 29 years ago, there were 15. So they had barely doubled by the time I was born. Now, in the 29 years since I've been alive, since I've been walking on this earth, 77 nations have built border walls. That means that 62 nations have built border walls in my lifetime. Why aren't you calling out those countries? Why aren't you talking to the people at the UN and saying, this is immoral what you're doing, this is wrong that these other countries are building these border walls? It seems like it only is a problem and it's only immoral because it hurts her political party. It keeps potential Democrat voters out of the country that it hurts her with her base. It seems that she only thinks it's immoral because it may negatively affect her. And so that's why she tends to take a stand against it. And if you're thinking, Oh, well, these are probably a bunch of third world nations that are just building these border fences that are at war. Now, some of the fences were built because countries were at war but if we're talking about the countries that built the fences, it's usually ones that had the power, the influence, the economy, and the infrastructure to be able to do so. For example, if we're looking at you know the Asia Minor, Asia, Asia Minor, Africa, Middle East, let's look at some of those countries. Okay, Austria, Bulgaria, Greece, Hungary, Macedonia, Sol, uh, Solnovia, Ireland, Israel, Cyprus, India, Turkey, Serbia, Croatia. I could go on. What do you notice about a lot of these countries? A lot of them are first world countries in Europe. And so if it's immoral to build a border wall, why is not she come out against any of these countries? And by the way, in a lot of these countries, it turns out the physical barrier, the wall, the fence, whatever you want to call it, it actually works pretty darn well. So let's look at, uh, a court. this is according, by the way, to Elizabeth Vallette who is a professor of geography at the University of Quebec. And she's, um, you know, quoting all of these and, and talking about all the different countries that are putting this up. And she would know that this is a study she did. She specializes in this stuff, the countries that have border walls. And I don't know if she's conservative or liberal or whatever. She's cited in a, uh, a USA Today article. And it doesn't seem like she's a conservative based on some of the things that she's saying. She's just telling you the facts that these are the nations that built a border wall. And so let's look at some of the effectiveness of it. Israel, since building their border wall on the West Bank, their terrorism has decreased by over 90%. 90%. They had been trying to negotiate peace, negotiate to stop these terrorist attacks for decades, but it was only when they built a wall that they started to see results. So negotiations failed them, building an actual physical structure didn't. And they had far less trouble with illegal crossings and 90% decrease in terrorism. 
Sorry, but the wall works. Let's look at some other countries. India built a 1,800-mile wall on the Bangladesh border, and that drastically cut crime in the region. So they were having all kinds of trouble with illegal crossings, crime across the Bangladesh border. They built this wall, which, by the way, again, built it in my lifetime, 1,800 miles long, and they were able to pull it off, and it drastically cut their rate. I don't think that the full 1,800 miles has been completed. I think this one started in about 1992. But the vast majority of it has been, and it has been a really, really big help to them when it comes to their crime rate. The EU, for the, all the EU's posturing about how it's evil that America wants to build a wall on the southern border, the EU actually um, has built these walls in Europe. They've actually built border walls and funded them. For example, in Cyprus, they funded one, and even though they didn't fund this uh, either of these, they were perfectly fine with Greece, Turkey, and Turkey, Syria. So when you're talking about the border between Greece and Turkey, and then the border between Turkey and Syria, these are both brand new border walls, again, erected in my lifetime, and the EU was perfectly fine with it. The UN was perfectly fine with it. Nobody complained when Greece and Turkey decided that they needed a border wall to separate their countries. Nobody complained about it. And turns out it actually works pretty well. Part of the reason that the EU wanted this wall up there is because they wanted to make sure that there was a barrier that would keep a lot of illegal migrants, a lot of people from the, you know, the, the aftermath of the Syrian civil war from crossing over into the EU where they would be able to easily go between countries within the European Union. And so this was a wall that not only did the EU seem fine with, but it seemed like they actually approved of because it was going to help them better manage who was in their countries. And on that standpoint, I really don't blame them. Let's also look at uh, Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia built a barrier that spanned about 600 miles. Now, granted, it wasn't all physical wall. Some of it was uh, ditches and trenches that were manned by soldiers some of it was minefields, but they built a barrier on their border. And that's the reason that they were one of the only countries that held back ISIS. ISIS was wrecking havoc in that region, and Saudi Arabia was next on the list. And you know what stopped it? Border wall, border control. They put all this up in a matter of, I guess it would have been about uh, just weeks. And when they saw ISIS coming, they had this barrier up, ready to go. That's the reason that Saudi Arabia did not have much trouble with ISIS. The wall worked for them. So we're just seeing example after example after example after example. The article that I was looking up a lot of this information on, they had about two or three dozen examples of this. I won't go through all of them. But time after time, the walls, an actual physical barrier, does have value. It does work. And so is it immoral to have a wall around your house? Because there are a lot of people that it's not because they're, you know, evil. It's because they hate the people outside. They have walls around their house. They have the wall, the walls of their house, and they also have a secondary wall around their house. There's nothing wrong with that. A lot of people, example, for, uh, with a pool to keep people out of their pool, they'll have a fence around there. Nothing wrong with that. It's not because you hate other people. It's not because you don't like them. But, you know, there's certain things inside that you have access to and you don't want other people to have access to. Ergo, a wall. There's absolutely nothing immoral about that. And this is my question to Nancy Pelosi, who's saying that the wall is immoral. How many illegal immigrants is she willing to take in? This is a woman who has several houses in D.C. and in California. And she is the, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the sixth wealthiest person, the sixth wealthiest politician, rather, in the state of California. Very wealthy person. Makes a lot of money off of her wine vineyards. Has several very large houses that could house no telling how many Mexican families. No telling how many South American families. So when is Nancy Pelosi going to pony up and say, you know what, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. And I think these people should be allowed to come over here to make a better life for themselves and I'll house them. Why is it that nobody ever asked that question of her? All right. Well, uh, and, and sorry, finally, is it immoral to have walls around the Vatican? Because the Vatican 
the smallest country in the world has border walls all along its border. I mean, the whole thing. And let's also keep in mind, Nancy Pelosi is a Catholic. So if she's going to say that the wall is immoral, she not only has to rebuke her fellow Democrats, she not only has to rebuke other countries around the world, she not only has to rebuke people with walls around their houses, she also has to rebuke the center of her own religion. So how does she assert that a border wall is inherently immoral when her religion, which you would assume is where her morality comes from, the source of her moral teachings, has a giant wall around the country that they control. It makes absolutely no sense. You know, you really should like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel. What's that? Oh, you want to know what the content's going to be? You want to know what's in it? No, 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 it's like Obamacare. So you got to subscribe to find out what's in it.